I'm Scott Kelly. I play in Neurosis, uh, as well as um, Corrections House and uh, Tribes of Neurot, and um, I have a solo project called Scott Kelly and the Road Home. Uh, tonight I'm in Montreal at, uh, where am I, Metropolis, playing uh, with Neurosis, uh, supporting Godspeed, you Black Emperor. <laughs> Time it was um, what was it like ninety six or seven probably and um, this was the time when the business was a lot of underground bands were getting sucked up by major labels and major labels were coming around us and sniffing around and we were getting these you know typical shitty major label offers and stuff like this and we had been offered a couple of support tours with bigger bands um, but when it came down to it like we would say yeah we'd, we'd be happy to do it um, but you know we, we, we can't eat shit we, we, we have to survive while we're out there um, and they would typically you know offer us you know uh, you know two hundred dollars a night or something like that and we're like man we're we're eight people on the road and we've got you know families at home and we can't do that we we've been doing our own shows for you know 15 whatever years at that time uh, Pantera was the first band that came along expressed interest in us and when we said look you know this is what we need in order to do this tour and they were like great you know no problem um, you know for sure Phil was the guy who was really into us musically I think that um, Rex and Dime were were into it on another level and I think that they they all three of those guys kind of enjoyed the like watching what happened to their crowd when we would play because that was uh, it was pretty funny a lot of nights it was just most nights we were playing to three or four thousand people who had no idea who we were and we were you know um, whatever that was uh, you know, 18 years into our uh, experiment and and we'd been and we'd been hammering clubs you know heavily for the last 10 years um, so you know being asked to do a 30 minute opening set, for Pantera was, you know, it was just like, okay, you know, just load up the shotgun and just blam and done. So it was a particularly um, <laughs> interesting pairing. But, you know, they treated us with total respect. They, they you know, it wasn't just the money, it was that, you know, um, you know, when we showed up, they they extended the hospitality to us. They they were very open and um, and giving guys. Um, they were they were super successful. Um, they they packed them in everywhere, particularly if they weren't in like strangely enough, Pantera. Like you go to New York or Seattle, and they would pull in two thousand or one thousand people. You take them to Indiana, and they're pulling like three thousand or four thousand in like four different cities in Indiana. I mean, like, if you take them to the middle of the country or out in the sticks somewhere, man, they packed them in. They had huge grassroots following of people, and so it was. Um, you know, we paid played to thousands and thousands of people for on that tour that that never would have had a chance to see us, and um, with very little pressure. Um, and like I said, they just, they were like, look, you know, we don't even really use our dressing room. We know you guys are touring in a van and it's winter tour, it's cold and, um, you know, you guys get in early, just use our room, it's heated, you know, we got showers and eat our food and watch our TV or whatever and it's just, you know, they're just super cool. <laughs> There was 
never a moment where we felt like we were like, you know, oh yeah, we got them, you know. It was, it's not like that, you know, it wasn't like, I mean, it was literally like maybe three or four people, five or six people would actually be paying to come see us play. Because the people who came to see us play regularly knew that we were going to be coming back or thought we were going to be coming back. Turns out we really weren't. But that wasn't really anything that we knew at the time. We just hadn't really realized that we were sick of totally sick of touring. At that point, we came around another couple times and hit everywhere, and then we stopped doing that. So, um, just the reaction of people. But I'm just f- fucking wide-eyed, you know. Pretty for the most part, you know. Corrections House was just a total mistake. Like we we didn't even intend on it happening at all. It was. Um, me and uh, and Mike Williams from I Hate God and Bruce Lamont uh, from Yakuza, we were going to do a solo tour uh, where the three of us were going to go out and do our solo things. And we were trying to come up with a collaboration for the end of the show, just something where um, the three of us could get together, whatever it was, you know, a cover song or a, whatever, whatever it was. We were just kind of abstractly thinking and... and um, at some point, we were throwing ideas around, and Sanford uh, Parker got involved. And he's a friend of all of ours, um, a guy who's worked with with Bruce in the past, and uh, and he just asked if he could if he could join it. And you know, he does loops and electronic stuff, and so he just kind of came up with these these beds and loops, and he sent them to me, and I just kind of came up with some guitar on top of it and he put it together and we came up with three songs and we just did a tour um, about a year ago in the States and um, we just really liked it and we really enjoyed being out with each other and we ended up just writing a whole record while we were out on the road and uh, recorded it and put it out recently it came out at uh, November on Neurot Recordings it's called uh, Last City Zero, and yeah, it's um, it's pretty fucked up. It's kind of uh, it's pretty different. I mean, it's got a lot of different elements to it, and it's definitely. Uh, I mean, we don't have a drummer, we don't have a bass player. Uh, we've got a baritone sax player. We've got Mike, you know, doing Mike shit, which is. It's sometimes, you know, his singing that people who are familiar with I Hate God are familiar with his style, but he also is doing a lot of his reading and his uh, spoken word stuff um, from his book, uh, Cancer as a Social Activity. Um, You know, Sanford's stuff is kind of sublime, uh, uh, industrialized sounding grooves and and uh loops and stuff and then i'm pretty much doing what i do i'm not stepping a whole lot out of my my comfort zone i'm just kind of supplying the meat to the kind of bring it all together you know um and then me and bruce are also singing as well but it's i don't know it just just came together Sense to you, ethically, aesthetically, um, and uh, why you became interested in, in working with them after all this time. Well, Colin reached out to me. I'm gonna say five years ago or so, and kind of made me aware of what they were doing, and he did it in his typical self-deprecating way where he was like, yeah, you know, we're probably the worst third-rate neurosis wannabe band you'll ever hear, you know. And uh, we did a show, uh, I had this band called Blood and Time, and it was it was basically 
kind of like my solo stuff, but a little bit electrified. Me and Noah, Josh Graham, and uh, we did a show with them in Belgium um, a few years back. And uh, that was the first time that I saw them. And it was, you know, the intensity of that band is, is overwhelming. And of course, you know, they're we're real shy about it, as they are. You've met them, and you know that they're they're kind of you know they're kind of shy. Um, but on stage, they're you know they're they're a unit. They're just like a heart. You know, they're like a heart, just crushing these these riffs and these songs. Um, and all I can say is that from that time to now. I saw them at the record release party, uh, record release show, when they sold out a thousand capacity venue um, in Belgium last year, and they're fucking phenomenal now. I mean, they are like so, so good, and they've taken everything to an incredible level aesthetically like nobody can touch them as far as I'm concerned I mean they have taken every aspect of it and they just embrace it so passionately they put so much work into what they do the imagery the 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 visuals were immense I mean they had three-dimensional visuals when at that show that literally had three screens set up on the stage that were rotating through I mean it was on a whole level that I, I mean and this is a homegrown band you know this isn't like they went out and hired some you know hot shot to do their shit these are guys who learn their own stuff and like learn how to do it and spend time thinking on how to do it I mean they're yeah I they were a huge influence on us when we decided to stop doing visuals, honestly, because we had stopped doing visuals um, for a number of reasons, but after I saw them, I was like, yeah, this is why I don't want to do them anymore, because look at that, like, that's amazing, I mean, that is mind-blowing, and they they should have that as far as I'm concerned. I mean, it, it it's... They are a great band, and I, I, um, I really like the guys in the band a lot, and, and I've gotten to know them over the years. Um, I see them every time I go to Europe, but I go to Europe once or twice a year, so um, I'm doing some shows with Matthew's uh, solo project here in a, in a couple of weeks. I'm going over there for a solo tour. And um, I'm looking forward to spending a week in the van with him, just getting to know him a little more, you know. They are totally the, the, the last thing that I would ever say about them, that they would be a third-rate version of anything. They're like a fucking first-rate version of themselves, man. I mean, they are like... I mean, yeah. There's there's no comparison to anybody as far as I'm concerned. Yeah, I can think of some uh, third-rate, uh, you know, Neurosis tribute band. I'm not going to name them here, but I can think of them, you know? And they're not one of them. So. Uh, no, I'm sure there are. I, you know, I don't really... Honestly, I don't really notice it myself. People always point it out to me, but I'm like... I, I don't, you know, I, I usually find myself liking them because I kind of like, I, I really like what we do, so, you know, like, like I like what, how we play, I like our sound, I mean, our sound is like how we, you know, we created our sound specifically because we like it, we like to play what we play, so I find myself, you know, like, oh, yeah, this is pretty fucking good, <laughs> you know, like, so I'd be like, oh, yeah, that's your riff, Yeah. you're like, really? Yeah, so, you know, it's this riff off of that song, I'm like, oh. Oh yeah, it is my riff. Oh well, you know, whatever. You know, it. I don't. You know, I don't care about that shit. We, I mean, any anybody who's ever listened to Amoebix or Rudimentary Peni or Black Flag or Black Sabbath or Pink Floyd or Joy Division, 
Um, it's, you know, it's all over what we do, all over it. So, you know, we're absolutely not some original fucking band or something. Yeah.